Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Spot. So I am here with uh, Ken Perry and uh, Keith Creasy of American Printing House and they, American Printing House for the Blind, and they are going to show us this really cool device. And Ken's gonna tell us all about it. <laughs> so what we've got here is the graffiti. It's a tactile graphics display. This is actually a uh, prototype. If you um, are looking and uh, if you're listening, I'll just kind of describe what I'm doing. This is what the size is gonna be. It might be a little smaller. But um, about this, the size of a laptop. It's about the yeah, about the size of a laptop. Along the bottom, we have an area of pins that are 32 by 20 right now. But when this is finished, it'll be 30. Oh well, it'll be 64 by 40. And if you notice these blank panels up here, these are all going to be pins as well. I see. So we have a, uh, for those who can't see this, we have a lower left-hand corner of uh, 32 by 20 pins. And right now there are no pins up. I guess there's one slightly up here. These are handmade prototypes. So, you know, some of the pins might get stuck from time to time. Mm -hmm. But once they're not handmade, um, that won't happen. Okay, so see if you can read the big Braille. Because, again, this is a little more spacey than uh, Braille. Um, it's kind of hard. Oh, oh, it says hid? Okay, so I'm not in the SD card yet. There. Let's say now. There's a K C. Or is it supposed to be an A C? Uh, acting. Okay. It's hard to read because you, it's a cute angle. And if you know that, you can actually read it. Um, so it says acute angle. Okay, I see. Acute, yeah. So if I select that file, and then I'm going to clear the text. So what you've got is an acute angle. Okay? Yeah. Now, let's go on for some level things. The next picture is a cube, but it's a 3D cube. It's a 3D cube. And if you notice, the back pins are lower right. than the front pins, so that you can tell what's behind the cube and what's in front of the cube. Oh, so you have multiple levels. Got you. So we have so that's what your four are. different levels, and and the fifth being blank. Being nothing. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to a cylinder, and the cylinder's not as good as the cube because of the size of the display. If the display the was bigger... The cylinder looks remarkably like a cube. Yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to think. Uh, this is kind of like the bottom, the circle, because the back one is the, you know... <coughs> It's going to, when it's bigger, it'll actually have a better... Now, layout. when will it be bigger? Okay, so if you look right now, this bottom part is 32 by 20. Right. If you run your fingers I'll all the way over these it. blank I'll spaces... Fill in that blank space. Yeah, the blank spaces are going to be all pins as well. Okay. This is just a prototype, the small prototype. Now, is he also going to make the pins smaller and put them closer together at some so, point where it, it's, so the first where it's ones, more the first, Yeah, the first ones are going to be uh, this size. Okay. Um, you know... After you know this one sells for a while, we are going to be working on shrinking all this stuff. So this that is a be... first. This is a first size, and you know, sure. test type thing. Sure. So, um, yeah. But let me get to something. That... Yeah. And then I don't remember what the next one is. I think this is a flaggy thing. Yeah, I think it's a flag on a pole. And here's your pole. It's right down at the, yeah, on, and it's on the left-hand like side, and it's blowing in the wind. Let me. Uh, do you guys mind if I? Get in here and... Nope. No, that's fine. And this is a... Oh, this one's a hard one. So I looked at this for a long time and I didn't want him to tell me what it was. Because after he told me, I'm, I was kind of mad because you should be able to tell what it is. But as soon as you, you're told, you will know what it is. You want to know? Uh, yeah. It's an envelope. Oh yeah, that does make sense. With the, with the little, the yeah, little like, bit right there. Yeah, and it's got the lip and, on and it. And you get stuff. hung up on that little lip, and yeah. you're like, "Why is it there?" Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. How did I not see that to begin with? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. It is totally one of the, it's. You know, it's it's probably the, the second wheel. person's reaction to the wheel. <laughs> so now I've got it cleared. Now go ahead and draw. What do you want me to draw with? Your finger. You're doing. Oh, it okay, is. I see. It, it yeah. is. It now raises I'm up. In place. That's what you just did. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to unlock now it. Now get rid of it now okay, that I know yeah. what I'm doing. Now I know what you're doing. And tell me when to lock it, and I'll lock it in place. Okay, go ahead and draw. <laughs> He's trying to be Picasso over here. I know. I know. <laughs> this takes practice. Yeah, um, I can so, imagine. But, All right, lock, lock it. Okay, now you can look at it. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, I was, I was attempting to write, and every time I put my finger down to try to get my bearings, it yeah. Was... So let me try one. Clear. Yeah, that's one of the drawbacks. You have to really, you know, 
avoid touching it when you don't. What would be it. nice is if, if, if you. What is that? I just drew that. The circle. No. No. Oh. It looks like a. Is that supposed to be? A, is that supposed to be a human? It's a very Are, sloppy heart. Oh, heart. Okay. <laughs> very sloppy. Well, I do better be, usually. All but, you'd have to do to make that more doable, though, is if you if you could hold down, like, say, the backspace key. Yeah. And it would freeze it and then release it and We're then actually, it's live. And, and then, that's you know. great that you said that. This is just a lock and a release. This is the start. But yes, right. we are going to have But if you had a one key release where you could do it with one hand while you're drawing with the other, it's where you could have it live and not live with it. With, with Dave, one Dave's into the R&D development over here. I know. <laughs> that's what you know. If you have four so I'm here with Ken. Still here with Ken. And we are talking about the graffiti and from American Printing House for the Blind. Now... You had mentioned this was a prototype, right. um, and there's still a lot of changes to come. Any idea of timeline on that? Uh, you know, over the next, uh, we're going to start uh, doing, proto uh, I guess you call it field testing. We're actually doing expert review coming up um, the 1st of December, mm -hmm. and then we're going to have prototypes, the, the full-size prototypes. Um, I would call it... Um, late late winter maybe mm. early spring right and then uh we'll have another set of prototypes that have more functionality um closer to summer so um after that it depends on what kind of changes we have to make on when we're going to release it um so you know as as you see it's not vaporware we actually have something working but uh, i can't give you an exact date because uh, we have had, you know, when it comes to the Over Reader 20, we've had everything from Indian floods to uh, chip makers disappear on us. So it all <laughs> depends on, you know, the whims of the har hardware gods, as you'd put it. So. Yeah. Well, as a proof of concept, I think this is awesome. Right. Um, so, of course, probably no idea about pricing yet uh, either. No. The pr you know, the, all I can tell you is the pricing will be cheaper than some of the, uh, the, the um, tactile displays that are coming out uh, from some of the Korean companies. We're going to try to keep it as low as we can go, but, uh, you know, if these things do cost some money. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think it's it's pretty cool. The fact that you can do pictures on there is yeah, insane. And, you know, and some of the, the, the really, uh, and I don't know if you got this in the other parts of the video, but some of the really important features are it is touch. You can draw on it. You have the four levels. Mm -hmm. um, it will be able to hook to a computer just through the HDMI port. So, um, you know, you can use it just with about any software. Uh, you can also, um, that we have an open API, so companies can make drivers for this re really easy. Uh, it's a very simple driver. Um, uh, with the way the touch and stuff works on this, you can even write a game for it. So there's wow. uh, there's amazing things you can do with it. My goal, I, I want to put Tetris on here because I think it'd be really exciting yeah. to be able to play finger Tetris. So, <laughs> so, yeah. How would it, uh, how does it handle um pictures like if I went and took a picture of the pool out there and came back in and loaded it up how so I mean this is not going to show you um, this is not going to show you Mona Lisa or right uh, you know let's say the pool it depends <clears throat> on how what, you know which kind of um, picture filters you use because you know on the on on phones nowadays you can turn a picture into a line drawing pretty quickly yeah right so let's say you took a picture of the swimming pool and you you change it to a line drawing you would actually be able to see the shape of the pool and maybe you know stuff beside it so it's it's think of it kind of as a line drawing kit kind of the uh you know the equivalent of a blind etch a sketch with some extra features that you know because we could set different colors to different levels mm -hmm. you might be able to do something like view a map that has uh the rivers that are blue uh, the highways that are red, uh, the, the state lines that are black, and you set those at different levels so when you're feeling it, you could actually see where the river crosses uh, across the Rio Grande or something. You know, right. So. Uh, yeah, that's a great example. I, I, I completely understand right. what you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a lot we can do with it. Um, right now we have it hooking up to the calculator and also to a program on a computer. Uh, one amazing thing when I was at... Um, our annual meeting, I got to see uh, chemical bonds for the first time tactily because uh, we had the aspirin molecule and we just pulled it up. Um, one of the guys was at our annual meeting, his name's Volker, and he, he showed us some of his um, chemical bonds and we were able to just pull it up and I could see the double uh, helix, double single helix with the carbon atom and all yeah. that. So that, that's just amazing. And I also do things with electronics. So there's just, there's all kinds of things you could do with this. I wonder, um, I had I'd heard about people 3D printing pictures of uh, ultrasounds. Yeah, so uh, there's, you know, <laughs> we're actually working with, uh, 
we're, we're trying to work on a um, touch mapper. I think you've probably heard of touch mapper. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to try to work with them to do things. But 3D printing just takes time. Right, know? right. And, and Materials I, and, yeah. Well, I, and I know, uh, sorry, I know there's... Um, I know there's a 3D printer coming from Stanford and a few other schools that are going to be much faster, mm -hmm. but they're also much bigger because they take liquids and stuff. Yeah. What this gives you is an instant uh, ability to zoom on pictures. So, for instance, with your ultrasound, uh, my boss, Larry Skukon, was able to see his granddaughter's um, ultrasound and actually be able to count three fingers. Now, it took some scrolling to find that hand, mm -hmm. but once you can see it, it's kind of cool to be able to actually see the shape of a hand of a of a unborn child as a blind person. It's just, it's fascinating. Yeah, I think it yeah. opens up a whole new world. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, I mean, and this is not a standard, I mean, so, you know, in electronics, I look at schematics that, I look at schematics <laughs> that are embossed, mm -hmm. and, um, Sometimes those schematics, you, you can't tell if arrows are printing one way or the other. Well, I can't sit there and re-enlarge uh, that embossment. I have to go reprint it, enlarge it, reprint it. Well, in this case, I can actually take a transistor and enlarge it on the screen until it's really big and actually be able to see the arrows and stuff. So there's going to be amazing things that, um, as a separate tool, this is not going to replace really great done tactile graphics but what it's going to give us is instant access and and moving access so things like oscilloscopes that show you data moving you could actually see the data moving <laughs> that's going to be really cool yeah that is going to be and, right. i mean those are really technical examples but think of a kid that has to take a test on a web page and he's taking a math test and they say here's this graph is it cosine or is it sine well does it cross through the origin I, you know, with a with a graphing calculator, you can do it. You know, with our uh, talking graphing calculator, you could do it. But on these online tests, they don't have a way yet. Mm -hmm. So with this, you could plug this uh, into the HDMI port, and you could use it as a monitor and actually look at those pictures. Right. So some of these online test things could actually work better with this. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that this is just starting to scratch the surface, and you know, we're going to continue to improve it as we go. Oh, I think that's great, and. You had mentioned, I uh, asked about portability. Right. Is it going to have like a case, a strap, and things so, like that? <laughs> so as you see, it's kind of um, chunky. For those people looking, it's kind of chunky. Right. Um, so as, as for portability, um, you know, it's kind of large. It's like a laptop. So we're, what we're talking about is kind of a hard cover that mm -hmm. you can slide on it. Sort of, well, sort of like this. Um, let me move this over. This graphing calculator has, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe we could do just something that flips back. Um, but, we, you know, it probably will be removable so we can maybe put two displays back to back someday. Mm -hmm. um, so... As for carryability, uh, you'll probably have to put it in a bag. Um, you know, just uh, putting a handle or stuff on it may make it too big. We could put ring holes on it. Um, this is all stuff that are, you know, since this is a prototype. Right. Uh, this is the kind of input we're going to be getting from our expert reviewers soon and our field testers after that. And, yeah. and, and the, you know, the, the, the body of the thing could change drastically. The size, this has to be pretty much the size. We do have to have components here. Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. it... It's going to be, you know, this size of unit, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's looking looking great so far. And as I said, once that whole area is covered with the pins, I think it's going to be really, really. I think we'll come back really cool. um, in February. Uh, so, you know, I think I'll come back to talk to you and maybe uh, show you. Well, I say February, but that time frame, mm -hmm. we should have a forty cell. Uh, 40 by 60 area okay. and then you can actually see how you know that that's going to go so, yeah and well, we'll do an update at that point <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right ken thank you very much no problem uh so once again ken with the uh the american printing house for the blind talking about the graffiti so you guys stay tuned the blind spot i'll keep you updated feedback in the background <laughs> <laughs> a lot of noise i know thanks we'll see you guys later all right. <laughs>